City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 24th of October 2017. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transpired occurring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are with us today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and foster its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Members, yesterday on the 23rd of October in 1942, the Battle of El Alamein began. More than 1,200 Australian soldiers were killed in this battle. Australian soldiers, three Australian soldiers were awarded the Victoria Cross posthumously. So members would all please remain standing in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Members, ladies and gentlemen, can I welcome you please to the uh, meeting of the City of Adelaide Council, Tuesday the 24th of September, October 2017. Members, I will start with item five on our agenda, which is apologies and leave of absence, of which we have nil. We have a full complement of elected members. Members, I'll take you directly to confirmation of minutes from our last meeting of the Council Chamber on the 10th of October 2017. Can I please have a mover member to adopt those minutes? Councillor Milani, seconded by. Deputy Lord Mayor, any debate members? Members, I'll put this straight before you. Those in favour of adopting the minutes from previous meeting, those against? We will carry the minutes from the meeting held on the 10th of October 2017. Members, I'll take you directly to item seven on your agenda, which is public forum deputations. Um, we have one of each. So the first item, and members, I have uh, declined two other public forum and deputation requests uh, because of uh, missing the deadline. So I would encourage everyone just to be mindful of the deadline for the Lord Mayor accepting public forum and deputation request in the City of Adelaide Council Chamber is 4pm on Friday prior to the Tuesday. Uh, members, our first um, public forum deputation is from Mr Sam Taylor, which is regarding the end of trip economy. Sam Taylor with us. Mr Taylor, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Uh, the members will afford you five minutes and uh, you may or may not receive questions thereafter. Welcome to the Council Chamber. Uh, Lord Mayor, Councillors, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today. Uh, my name is Sam Taylor. I run a strategy company called Glasshouse. And I'm here today in relation to one of our projects. I'm very, very excited to share this project with you that we've been developing for the last 18 months. Um, Adelaide's a fantastic place to, to try new things at the moment. And we're hearing a lot about the potential to unlock new industries and service economy jobs. We want Adelaide to really 
pave the way when it comes to unlocking new economies, which is what happens when we revolutionise our mindset. Today I'd like to talk about transit-related economic activity. Transit-related economic activity happens when people slow down at the intersection of two transit nodes, modes, sorry. For example, when people transfer between trains or when people get out of their car and walk or park and ride and get on the tram or when people get off a bike and walk the final 50 metres. Each one of these little trips is a moment of slowdown. And I, I, I use uh, Peregrines on the run, for example, um, as a business that have worked this um, down to tea with the understanding that that point of slowness is the perfect time to sell people stuff. So if we want to increase the opportunities for people to slow down at these intersections at the end of their trip, and what happens at the end of the trip? There's coffee, last minute items, flowers, snacks. We already do some of these things. They are impulse buys, but buying habits leads to buying plans. So people begin to plan to spend money at these nodes. So we've come up with a name to describe this flurry of activity, the end of trip economy. It specifically relates to the business around the end of trip. Adelaide's best example at the moment is the Adelaide Railway Station where there are a few delis, a nut shop and a hairdresser, uh, we think we can do better. So the challenge is to find the optimum way to maximise this activation. We focused on commuters in the first instance, people who live outside the CBD and commute in each weekday. So what does that look like? We've analysed the trips across driving, riding, trains, trams, walking, to work out where those nodes might be and which form of commuting transport boosts jobs the most. We found that Adelaide has the most to gain by helping people to increase the number of nodes in a single trip. And that occurs when people ride by bike or catch a train or some combination of those two. So now that we've got our objective, it's just about project managing the solution. We try and find some barriers, understand why people are driving instead of riding, and see if we can help the decision to ride to become easier so that we can boost the end of trip economy in these spaces. And this is already, of course, in keeping with Adelaide City Council's strategic plan, as well as the state government's commuting targets. One of the main reasons people don't commute by bike or by jogging, for example, is that when you arrive in the office, you're all sweaty and disgusting. My office, for example, doesn't have any showers in it, and that's the case for other heritage buildings around the city, as well as lots of B, C and D grade buildings. So what's our solution? We've designed an end-of-trip solution that helps people who currently drive make the decision to just off the bike and ride instead. It's high security bike storage with showers and en-suites above in a five-star luxury facility that plugs the gap in the transport chain. Our facilities will be a stunning addition to the streetscape, each one designed and customised to enhance the uniqueness of its surroundings and will play host to 70 to 80 or so commuters each day, twice a day, all of whom who will need coffee, bike maintenance, concierge services, dry cleaning, even breakfast, massages, shoe polishes, haircuts, all driven by the market demand that comes from a concentration of slowed down people. So councillors, it's the final piece of the puzzle. I hope we can make it a reality to make sure Adelaide stays at the top of the world's best cities. And in closing, I'd like to acknowledge the assistance of those across state and local government who have assisted to bring our project from concept to this point presenting today. Um, and I have some further documentation for you that I'd um, appreciate if uh, you would mind having a look at. And uh, I would absolutely welcome your face value feedback and your questions. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Mr Taylor. Members, do you have any questions of Mr Taylor? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, thank you for the presentation. Uh, sounds fantastic. I'd love one out the front of my place if that's possible. Um, what is it that you want council to do though? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I'll preface that by um, paraphrasing the Transport Minister who earlier this month um, said that together with the City of Adelaide, we will carefully monitor the pilot program, this being the bike share OVO scheme, and if successful, we'll consider other cycling initiatives or infrastructure to invest a million dollars originally allocated for a bike share scheme. We're supportive of new innovative companies choosing South Australia as the best place to launch their business. And that's attributed to the Transport Minister, uh, Stephen Mulligan. So in that context, um, I guess I'm here today for three key purposes. Uh, one is to uh, ask that you contextualise contextualize this concept 
um, in the, uh, I guess, vacuum that has been created by that, uh, that unallocated bucket. Um, and in doing so, seek your support, your in-principle support for a proposal against that, um, that context. And uh, additionally, um, one of the main activities over the last 12 months, the Council has been to um, present its proposal to a number of other local government areas um, who are broadly supportive. And so I'd uh, look to Adelaide City Council to lead um, and to assist in um, a, a multi-local government area discussion that could be had to look at transit networks across Adelaide metro area. Thank you, Councillor. Members, no further Councillor Clarehead. Thanks for your presentation. Um, we do welcome innovative ideas. I just need a little bit of clarity about what you want from us as a council, That's fair. if this were to go ahead. Um, well, in the first instance, um, uh, we know that there is some funding available as a result of this um, bike share scheme, ostensibly, um, uh, you know, that, that bucket has been unallocated. Um, so I'm seeking in principle support for a proposal to um, present this idea as with that, that, uh, that bucket of money as a backdrop. Um, but additionally, as, a, as I said, to, um, to help uh, me, I guess, to facilitate a meeting with our City Council economic advisors and other local government area economic advisors to try and find a way where a multi-modal transport network that involves this concept uh, might be most appropriate. And I'll give you an example. Um, I've been speaking to Port Adelaide Enfield City Council and to the um, City of Marion, um, and uh, it's been, I guess, raised in conversation that a great opportunity for this particular facility might be at Opens Interchange so that people who wish to um, commute into the city by bike could do so halfway, um, freshen themselves up at Oakland's interchange, thereby creating an end of trip economy, economic node of activity, and then catch the train the rest of the way into the city without having to ride 50 kilometres from their home. So um, that discussion is uh, difficult for me to organise. So I, I guess uh, to put it in specifics, it would be really helpful to have an opportunity to work with the City Council for, to facilitate that intergovernmental discussion. Councillor Clearan, you have a supplementary? Yes. Um, do you want land from us or I just, I'm not really clear. I mean, okay, we're great at facilitating and coordinating discussions and collaboration, but where would these be located? I'm, I'm glad you asked that question, Councillor. Um, at this well, point of order, excuse me, that yeah. these are meant to be points of clarification. No, we're, we're not here to engage in a debate or we're asked for a workshop. This can be done at a later time. You can answer that question quickly, Mr. Taylor, and then I'll move on. So, members, the spirit of this is, yeah. Mr. Taylor, for your information, is the members just simply have an opportunity to ask you points of clarity. It's not an it's not a uh, opportunity for debate. I so that's not suggesting you are. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. I understand. Oh, I'll keep this brief. Um, you're right, Councillor. Um, at this point, we'd like to take it to the next stage, which I consider to be design phase two, feasibility. Um, and that's about what is the most economic place to put it. In the first instance, I'd love to play this on public space, namely um, existing road space. Um, and I'd love to have a discussion at a later date around um, how to bring 80 people into an existing space where currently we only can fit 15 per day. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Councillor Wilkins, do you have a question you'd like to clarify? Yeah, the, the, uh, the visuals don't show the context of the proposal, but from my looking at that, am I correct? And it would be like having two shipping containers, one on top of each other, in a parallel parking thing in, in the road. Yeah, that's correct. So that's one option. Um, another option that's been proposed, for example, is um, uh, to put it in a private company's car park so that that company could, in fact, offer uh, those services to their staff without, in fact, having to renovate their existing facility. Um, I think in a city CBD context, uh, the road is the obvious place. It enhances the street. Um, we'd like to consider that the public realm is, uh, is open for just discussion around the use of that space, um, particularly in the context of the economic benefit of bringing 80 people a day into one space. Um, certainly weigh that up objectively around um, how we currently use that space. Uh, now the question is, have you um, looked at 
locating the um, these within the existing entity building. Council, I would suggest there might be an additional opportunity to have this debate. I think at this point in time, it's simply a presentation by Mr. Taylor. So, can we take that one on notice, please? Mr. Taylor, thank you very much indeed. Thank you for joining us at City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Appreciate it. Much thank you very much. Thank you very much. Members, our second deputation for this evening is Mr. David Sefton regarding the Victoria Square family event. Mr. Sefton, welcome. We will provide you five minutes, and the members may elect to ask you questions thereafter. Points of clarity. Thank welcome. you, Mayor. Good evening, councillors. Uh, obviously, you have the detailed proposal for Victoria Square's family event uh, in front of you, so I'm not planning on going into too much detail on it. I thought it might be useful to give you a little background. Um, as a local parent, taking my 10-year-old son to uh, an event on a fringe hub, I won't name, um, uh, it's pretty clear that those events are not particularly geared towards a family experience and are much more about the, the party event that the fringe quite naturally is. Uh, having had that experience over a couple of fringes and having that thought in the back of my head and witnessing Victoria Square uh, slipping into disuse in uh, the busiest time of the year. Um, in a meeting with Heather Kroll, the director of the Fringe, I proposed uh, the thought I had had to actually take on the idea of a hub space, not unlike the gardens or the Royal Croquet Club, but make it a family-based <laughs> event, an event that was geared entirely towards the experience of kids and their parents and schools and community. Uh, and uh, in discussion with Heather and subsequently with the Lord Mayor, uh, it's fairly clear that that does not exist currently in that time when it seems everything else is already there. Uh, and this really isn't. Um, I feel um, that an event of this nature in the square uh, could be treated as a flagship event for the city, the state, for all the partners. Um, it's an event that um, this, uh, I, I feel that it, it would actually be uh, something that could be used to activate the square. It's something that's um, something that could be pointed at as um, containing excellence, interactivity, community engagement, um, um, much of it free, uh, although not all, clearly. Um, and it's clear that um, the bulk of the fringe, how should I say this, is run off its bar sales and uh, wherever possible premium ticketing. But it, it, it is that income that generates the capacity for the fringe to be on the scale it is, which is why an event like this requires a subsidy. And we're not talking about uh, taking in vast alcohol sales, and we're also talking about the capacity to do things for free, and, the, and if not for free, um, at a well-subsidised rate to the general public. Um, I think uh, in partnership, we're already talking to the central market and the neighbours around Victoria Square. Uh, it, uh, clearly, there's already um, uh, the willingness of the state to be involved. Uh, it's something that I, f I feel um, it provides an opportunity that currently doesn't exist to showcase something which currently isn't there. Uh, I, we are already at great pains to make sure we're not overlapping on any conversations with any other festival entity uh, of any other kind. And of course, we would continue to do that moving forwards. Um, we're very clear that this is something which is which would be new for that period. And um, I uh, respectfully ask you to give it your serious consideration. I think it would be um, something that would um, be a, a genuine benefit to the people of Adelaide at that time of year. Um, I just want to thank Claire and her team for all their help in getting it this far. Uh, it's early days. Um, this, the, the plan this year would be just for two weekends. We would plan moving forwards to seek more corporate sponsorship and more, and more in, uh, other financial sources of income uh, in order to expand it over time. Uh, we have partnerships already. The Fringe has been extremely supportive. Car Clue is already on board. Uh, sorry, I didn't watch the clock. Um, I'll stop there just in case I'm maxed out. Um, thank you for, uh, for listening. Um, I hope you give this some thought. Um, thanks a lot, mate. Thank you, Mr. Seven. You did that in four minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Members, do we have any questions, points of clarity, not points for debate? Councillor Hendon. 
We do already have a flagship children's art event, albeit not at this time of the year. Have you had any, any conversations with Dream Big? Um, obviously, it's not a Dream Big year next year. Um, I clearly moving forwards. Obviously, and also, it's not a confirmed event until it's uh, passed. Uh, we certainly would. Of course, I talked to the festival centre and, and we talked to everyone. It felt a bit uh, preemptive to go out and talk to them before we had a confirmed event on the table, but it would absolutely be in the plan. And sponsorship, do you have any corporate sponsorship lined up for? It's all, this has all been very last minute for the first year. Uh, we, we had some leads, uh, the, I mean, with little bits and pieces of, of mostly in kind support. Uh, and the market, the, the traders at the market that we've spoken to are incredibly enthusiastic about us just as actually reaching out to them for an event on the square. We're getting a very positive response there. We would be looking to, towards a more substantial corporate campaign moving forward with more time. Thank you. Members, do we have any further questions? Mr. Seppin, thank you very much for your deputation. Thank you. Thank you. Chamber. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you to both persons who provided a deputation of the Council Chamber this evening. <laughs> members, item 8 in your generous petitions, of which we have nil. Now, members, I'm proposing a change to the order of your Council papers. Members, you have a number of items, if I take you directly at this point in time to your confidential items. What I'm proposing, members, is I'm going to deal with all of the confidential items firstly and then move this chamber back into public to deal with the balance of the item. We've got consultants who can only be with us for a limited period of time, members. This is why I'm doing this. But in saying so, item 18.2.1, which is the delegation of authority and award of contract regarding Gawler Place redevelopment, after discussions with our CEO members, I'm going to move that item into public. So item 18.2.1 regarding Gawler Place Award of Contract will become item 12.10 as a public item on your council papers, which leaves us with 18.2 through to 18.5, four items to deal with in confidence. So members, what I will do is that I'll do a call over for four motions to put those items into confidence. I'll then ask the gallery to temporarily depart because we will be debating items in confidence. Once those items are dealt with, we will reopen the council chamber for public debate and I will take us, in the interest of our guests in the gallery, straight to item 15.4, Councillor Martin, which is a motion moved by yourself regarding the new start allowance. We'll deal with that first and then I'll go back into sync with the balance of your agenda, members. So members, we're going to now deal with the confidential items. So I would need members, please, a mover and a seconder to move item 18.2.2 into confidence. Moved by Councillor Corbell, seconded by Councillor Slama. No debate. Those in favour? Those against? We move that into confidence. Item 18.2.3 regarding civic recognition. Those in favour? A mover, please. Councillor Aviard, moving. Seconded by Councillor Hender. I'll put that straight to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We move that item into confidence. 18.2.4, progress of confidential motions, moved by Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. Straight to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We move that item into confidence. 18.2.5, commercial business case. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Slama, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. Straight to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We move 18.2.5 into confidence. If we could please close the door. If any members in the gallery are not pivotal to these items, can I ask you to leave?
commence re-recording. We are recording. Video live. Live streaming, Councillor. I'd like to thank the um, uh, members of the gallery uh, for your patience. The elected members had an urgent matter in which they needed to debate in confidence. We thank you very much for your patience. Members, as advised prior to moving the meeting into confidence and now bringing it back into public, I foreshadowed members in the interest of everyone's time, and again I, I say I thank you for your patience, I'm going to bring item 15.4, which is one of the motions on notice forward. I will then return your agendas to item 9. So, Councillor Martin, would you please like to move your motion or put your motion forward for debate with regards to item 15.4, which is 200 and page 220 of your papers? Councillor Martin? Yes, Lord Mayor, would you um, allow me to read the, uh, the motion? For the you chamber? may do so. Thank you. Uh, but Council 1 formally notes Department of Employment Statistics from the March quarter show 1,192 residents of the City of North Adelaide are unemployed. Two, notes the Australian Federal Government Social Security support payment for people experiencing unemployment, New Start, is currently $160 per week below the poverty line. And three, in order to pursue our agreed strategic position to work with the State Government, community leaders and community organisations to support vulnerable members of the community, request that the CEO writes on behalf of Council to relevant Government Ministers advocating for an increase to the New Start allowance. You need a seconder? Yes, yes. Councillor Corbell has indicated that. Councillor Corbell, Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Members uh, will be aware that I don't generally support intervention in federal matters over which we have no control. However, I am of the view that if we're to meet our strategic objectives of supporting members of the community who are vulnerable and whose well-being is at stake, then that is reason enough to support this uh, proposal. It is absolutely consistent with our strategic plan. And there is, as this uh, motion acknowledges, a substantial number of people in our community, people live, living within the boundaries of the city of Adelaide who are unemployed. Now, as the, uh, the motion suggests, the number, uh, the last accurate number I have of people unemployed in this local government area is 1,192. And that I'm told represents an unemployment rate of around 9%. Now, that is in uh, what is supposed to be the fifth most livable city in the world, a large unemployment rate. And let me put it in some context by telling you that uh, we are number three on the list of local government areas for high unemployment. Uh, at the head of the list is Salisbury with 14%, Playford followed by 9.5%, and then zooming into third place is the city of Adelaide. Um, unemployment is actually lower in the local government areas of Onkaparinga and Port Adelaide Enfield. Now, uh, 1,192 people unemployed is bad enough, but worse still is an allowance that condemns each one of them to live below the poverty line. Now, I'm actually uh, in awe of anyone who can live on $267 a week. I can't imagine how they do it. But I despair uh, at the impact that that feat must be having on the physical and psychological well-being of anyone struggling on that amount of money. 
Um, now, you may have seen uh, members an email from a ratepayer early in the week uh, who uh, works among uh, people who are recipients of Newstart and who observed multi-generational impacts. And, and I just read from part of the email, I see young clients whose learning delays and classroom behavioural difficulties are also exacerbated when their parents are reliant on Newstart because the family can't afford the medical necessities that improve their capacity to learn. For instance, many welfare dependent families need to save for periods of over a year to afford corrective lenses for their children. This places the child behind their age level in reading and maths and often results in conflict with teachers and administrators, which discourages school attendance and engagement. Now, that is just one term, long term impact. Lord Mayor, may I have just a, a moment of it? You need to look to your fellow elected members for that comfort? No. Members? Do I have a, do I have a majority? No. One, two, I have two, I have three. Thank you. You may not have a majority there, Councillor. No, now you do. Thank Councilor, you very much. Two more minutes. Thank you to those councillors for supporting the extension. Um, Lord Mayor, unemployment is a scourge on society and the level of new start payments exacerbates the problems of the unemployed, their loved ones and their families. And tonight, this is the chance of the elected members of this council to say condemning people to living below the poverty line is unacceptable. We will not accept it for the well-being of our citizens. We reject it. I ask members to support this. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Your seconder was Councillor Corbell. Do you wish to speak to this matter, Councillor? Oh, just briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm supporting this because it, I, I do see it as something that we can do to advocate for members of the community who have come out in force tonight. Um, it's actually come from the community and part of um, the mandate that's put forward as a principle for local government to observe is that we are responsive to the needs and interests and aspirations of the community. And they've been really clear. We've received um, communication um, at various means that this is something which is really important to members of our community. We have high rates of unemployment residents living in the North Adelaide in the city that would be reliant upon welfare. Um, many of them would be reliant upon the um, Centrelink's New Start allowance, which is $538.80 per fortnight. Um, and then you can earn a, a small amount of money, which will bring you up to 642. But can you imagine living off a, a total of $321 per fortnight, um, oh, sorry, per week. Um, that is well below the poverty line for, according to the Australian Council of Social Services, the poverty line in um, Australia is $426.30 per week. So that's around 37% less than um, that's living below the poverty line for many of our um, local residents. And I, I, see, I don't have an issue with having our CEO or Lord Mayor write a letter to the federal government to indicate that we advocate for increasing new start allowance. And, and on a personal note, I have lived for, over, for many, many years of my life um, at reliant on welfare, having been raised in a household where my father um, was on a disability pension and my mother was on a carer's pension and they still are to this day. And they, they're living just above the poverty line on $894 per fortnight and they can barely make it. And they're just fortunate that they've got some assets and they can still receive that income. Um, so you imagine trying to live on even less than that. I can't. I've, I've gone through counting every single dollar and I know what these people go through. They would be counting every single dollar and I think they deserve some dignity. Thank you. Now I'm seeing a flurry of hands. I've got Councillor Slama followed by Councillor Wilkinson followed by Councillor Hender. Councillor Slama, the floor is yours. Well, Mayor, I'd, I'd like to move that this motion be laid. Seek a second. You need a second for that, Councillor Moran. Members, that means I need to put this to the vote to lay this matter on the table. Those in favour? Those against? Members, I cast in favour of laying this matter on the table. Judy, can you please explain the net effect of that, please? Members, what, 
what is before you now is that the matter has been laid on the table, which means discussion and debate on this item has been adjourned to a later date to be determined by this council. Division. The Lord Mayor having cast in favour and, and myself speaking has moved the item beyond calling a division. I'd like to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the gallery for joining us this evening on this item. CEO, we have a change to our agenda. Uh, I understand that item 12.3 will no longer be debated. Could you please speak to that? Yes, through Lord Mayor. It's come to my attention that there is some concern regarding the um, progress of the helipad consultation process. Um, I'm currently in the process of seeking some advice and until I'm satisfied that all is in order, I'm not happy for Council to consider the matter. I must ensure that you are fully informed and accurately informed, so therefore I'm withdrawing the item and will submit again in due course. Thank you. Question? Just a question, Councillor Clarence. Yes, Lord Mayor, we've had people waiting here since six o'clock. Could someone please explain to them what is going on when you lay something on the table? I think we owe it to them to show a bit of respect. Point of order, Lord Mayor. The like, item has been dealt like with. Like the item has been dealt with, Lord Mayor. But I, I think we need to show a bit of respect to the people who've been please. here since six o'clock. I'll leave this debate, please. Members, this is why I asked Judy, the Secretariat, to explain what the process was of laying a matter on the table. That was the decision of the Council Chamber, was to lay the matter on the table and potentially debate it at a future date should the Council elect to do so. I hope that's clear, ladies and gentlemen of the gallery. We do thank you for your attendance today. Members, I'm now going to take your attention, now that the CEO has informed us that item 12.3, the helipad item, has been withdrawn from your agendas. I'm going to take you to item nine, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority and reports of other committees. Members, you have a, rec you have a recommendation to note. So moved by Councillor Abiyad, seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Abiyad, do you wish to speak to it? Councillor Moran. Lord Mayor, just a quick one. Um, given the advice of the CEO in relation to item three, if he could also provide advice to Appla in relation to whatever process he's undertaking um, with regards to item 12.3 that was just withdrawn by administration, just for administration to take that on board. Understand, CEO is noted. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak? We're noting some reports from Appla. No, that's Members, do I have any questions? Councillor Abiyad, summing up? Thumbnail. Members, I put item nine before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry item nine. Members, item 10, Lord Mayor's report, 24th of October. Members, I'd like you to note the passing of Lady June Porter, a former Lady Mayoress, aged 98. Wife of former Lord Mayor of Adelaide, Sir Robert Porter. A strong woman known for her charity work and philanthropy. A donation on behalf of the City of Adelaide has been made to the Art Gallery of South Australia, to the June Porter Foundation as suggested by the family. The Adelaide Town Hall Open Day was a great success, members, with close to 2,300 visitors attending over a six-hour period. And I thank you, members, for your support of that initiative. I spoke at the celebration of the 68th anniversary of the People's Republic of China and the 20th anniversary celebration of China Weekly Publication of South Australia over the course of the last month. Members, the Vogue Festival was launched in Rundle Mall and, attend, and I also attended a number of other Adelaide Fashion Festival events which did bring many people into the city of Adelaide over that period of a week. I also spoke at the launch of the Adelaide International Youth Film Festival at GU Filmhouse on Hindley Street, the launch of the Electric Vehicle Charging Hub launch on Franklin Street, the National Trust launch of the Local Heritage Community Consultation Report, opened an event of Seniors Card called Through the Lens Exhibition at the City Library, and also attended a Seniors event at Christchurch on Jeffcott Street in North Adelaide, and I also walked, along with other fellow elected members, in the Welcome to Australia Walk to a Gather event in the City of Adelaide on the weekend. I gave a presentation about the future of energy at the Open State event called Energy Action Lab, hosted by Business Models Incorporated, I gave presentations at the evolution of retail to the University of South Australia property students. 
I opened the Australasian Council of Justices Association Conference here in the City of Adelaide, the Australian Orthopaedic Association Conference, the Anime Go Anime Film Festival via the Japan Australia Friendship Association and Palace Nova Cinemas, opened the launch of the new dog park members in the South Park lands on Park 19, which is already proving to be extremely popular. I hosted a Lord Mayoral morning tea to welcome the artists from around Australia uh, of Tanandi, Festival of Contemporary Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Art, and visited an exhibition of the Festival of the Art Gallery of South Australia. I hosted a Lord Mayoral receptions to welcome representatives of the Australian Singapore Arts Group Cultural Leaders Forum and to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Lions Club International. Additionally, as patron, I spoke at the City of Adelaide Lions Club Convention. I attended the opening of the International Astronautical Congress and spoke at the opening and the closing dinner. I also visited traders on Bank Street, hosted the future of the East End Precinct Forum at the Stag. Thank you to Deputy Lord Mayor Vershaw, Councillors Abiyad, Councillor Martin, Councillor Hender, and Councillor Slama for your support and attendance at that function and I also attended the North Adelaide Precinct Network Networking Breakfast. The Lady Mayoress recently held town hall tours to welcome interstate and overseas guests attending the 50th anniversary of the Australian Irish Dancing Championships hosted in Adelaide, the Adelaide City Rotaract, women from the Sierra Leonean community of South Australia, and Stephen's Partners, a city-based business to learn more about the role of women in the city of Adelaide. She also opened the Adelaide Art Society Spring Art Exhibition. Members, I asked for a mover to adopt the Lord Mayor's presiding members report. Moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. Those in favour of adopting, we carry that item. Thank you very much, members. Members, I take you directly on to item 11 in your agendas, Councillor's reports. Do I have anyone who'd like to speak to their report? I have Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I wish to draw attention uh, to an item which has not been recorded. Uh, I represented you uh, last week at Restart a Heart Day, an event organised by the City of Adelaide, the Rundlemore Management Authority, SA Ambulance and the Heart Foundation um, to promote, among other things, uh, the strategy of the City of Adelaide, which is saving a life can be shockingly easy. Uh, which, as you, Lord Mayor, will recall, um, is uh, built around our uh, purchase and installation of automatic external defibrillators. Uh, this also gives me the opportunity, uh, if you'll indulge me, uh, to congratulate uh, our staff. Uh, the City of Adelaide has been recognised um, for its contribution and is being recognised now by the sound of things um, for its um, uh, its uh, um, shockingly easy campaign. Uh, it has been awarded the Hart Foundation Local Government State Highly Commended Award in the councils with populations of 10 to 50,000. Um, the initiative the Hart Foundation says is a standout creating education awareness on the importance of CPR and the defibrillation for cardiac arrest, an initiative that can be considered by all councils. And again, I congratulate uh, the staff of the city who've all worked very hard on that uh, project. Lord Mayor, if I may also raise, because I understand from the administration this is an appropriate point to do it, that during a council meeting in August, uh, there was a discussion of curfew arrangements at the Adelaide Airport. If you remember, I foreshadowed I would have to resign from the Adelaide Airport Consultative Committee because of the state government's conflict of interest provisions. Following further uh, assessment, including seeking legal advice and consulting the CEO and other members of the administration, I have revisited my position. I can clarify that my committee role is to participate in the sharing of information. The committee is not a decision-making body and that opens up the way for me to continue. So on that uh, basis, I would ask for it to be minuted that I will not be resigning from the position, though I'm open, of course, to any conversation uh, that members may wish to have on this subject. Noted, Councillor, it will be minuted upon the adoption of the councillor's reports. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Clarehan, followed by the DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to um, report that I represented you at the Adelaide Film Festival 
uh, on Wednesday the 11th of October uh, to and to introduce the film called um, Citizen Jane, Battle for the City, a film about Jane Jacobs and her impact on urban planning uh, and <coughs> other matters pertaining to livable cities. And Thank it's you. A fantastic Councilor. film too. Thank you, Councillor Kerhan. Delia. A quick one, Lord Mayor. Um, also on the uh, actually I've forgotten the dates. Thank you. Friday the thirteenth. Uh, I represented you at the House of Songs event, uh, which was an exchange of South Australian musicians. Uh, together with uh, three artists from South Australia and three artists from Austin who rediscovered the music of Brumley and also have performed and recorded those songs. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, no further questions. Can I have a mover, please, to adopt the Councillor's reports? Moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Corbell. Those in favour of adopting? Those against? We adopt item 11. I take you directly to item 12, Members which is item 12.1, the Heritage Incentive Scheme. Member, if you have a recommendation to approve, do I have a mover? Councillor Abiyad, looks like we've got an immediate second by Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Abiyad, you wish to speak to this matter? Councillor Wilkinson, do you wish to speak to this matter? I just commend the administration on the work that they've done in preparing, uh, looking at four different options to uh, celebrate this significant milestone. And I think the option one that they've come up with, which involves uh, uh, from the images lighting buildings in the manner of the North Terrace celebration, is a lovely way of, of celebrating that. Uh, option four. Option four is the one we're looking for. Option one. Councillor, do you wish to continue to speak to this matter, or can I move on to a fellow elected member? Uh, Concept four is being recommended. Oh, okay. That's right. Concept four, which is the last one out of the four options you've been provided, has been recommended in the motion by the uh, by moved, I should say, by Councillor Rabia. Lord Mayor, uh, perhaps if I could speak uh, just briefly. You ask. You can't speak to which time I've uh, finished okay. with Councillor Wilkinson, uh, Councillor Martin. Yes, it's got the lighting bit. Yeah, it's got that what you're saying. Uh, well, I think I think all of the um, proposals have, have have merit. I think it would have been good to have done the option one and yeah. four. They all have merit. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate? No, I'm going to go back to Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Abiyad, you're summing up. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.1. Thank you, members. I take you directly to item 12.2. Uh, Karananga, part 20, Outcomes of Expression of Interest Process, page 41. You've got a recommendation to note, to note and to authorise. Councillor Martin, moving is printed. Yeah, moving is printed, but a question to the administration first, Lord Mayor, if I may. I've got a second to a Councillor Henda, so I will take it. The floor is yours, Councillor Martin. Um, uh, <coughs> am I to understand uh, from the written information that the administration will present at a later date a design of any possible redevelopment of buildings together with lease details. CEO. Daniel, thanks. Yeah, just through Nick. Thank you. Yes, through the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Sensational. After all that. <laughs> a great example to all of us. <laughs> That was a the bouncing ball, wasn't it? Yes, that's was good. That was good. Uh, look, Lord Mayor, I congratulate uh, Paltney Grammar on being the uh, uh, successful um, uh, expression of interest. Uh, and also, uh, I must laud the process. It has been open and transparent, and it's arrived at a good outcome for all concerned. So yeah, I think we should give Mr Carr an award for his brevity. Uh, Councillor Hender, you seconded? Do you wish to speak to it? Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, just to, um, to cover off, I just make a declaration that my children attend Holy Grammar School, so it's a perceived conflict of interest, uh, which I, don't, I think is a part of a substantive group. Councillor, perceived actual or material? Perceived. Thank you. Members, any further debate? I don't see any hands, so I'm going to take you back to Councillor Martin. Members to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? 
We carry item 12.2, members. Item 12.3 has been withdrawn. Mr Carr, thank you for your expert advice. <laughs> members, I now take you to item 12.4, whereby you have a recommendation, recommendation to note subject to DBC equal support. Councillor Wilkinson, you're moving as printed. Do I have a second of Councillor Antic? Councillor Wilkinson, do you wish to speak to the matter? Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Antic. Yeah. Uh, Members, do I have any do I have any debate? Councillor Antic, I'm going to go back to the mover. So do you wish to speak? No, sorry, my mistake. Councillor Hender. Um, I'm really in a bit of a dilemma with this. I, I, I guess I'll support this. Um, but I do want to, to just note a couple of things about the process here. Um, we are about to provide very significant support to a commercial enterprise. Um, we do that in circumstances where um, we don't do it for anybody else. Um, we are uh, <laughs> we, generally speaking, we ask people to go through a process when um, when they receive funds from us, um, and we really haven't done that here either. Now I understand there's some real enthusiasm for this, and I'm enthusiastic about it too, I, I guess. But but I do want to um, just mark my concern about the process, and um, and I'd like to indicate to our administration that I'd be very disappointed if. Uh, anything like this was put to us next year, um, that I would expect that we might be seeding something here um, and then we would expect this this enterprise to find its feet, um, uh, to find its commercial sponsors, to show the world that it's got something to offer and then um, see what it can do on its own, on its own two feet. Um, it does bring great benefits to the heart of our city. In the middle of the festival, cent festival period, it, it provides something for children, all the things that um, our, our presenter indicated during his uh, presentation before the meeting uh, commenced. Um, but for me, it's not an ideal way of getting that outcome. Um, and I'd be very unhappy if we, had, if we had to do that again next year. I'd like to see it take off and a step back. Thank you, Councillor Hender. I'm sure that our director will uh, express that sentiment. Members, I don't see any further hands, so I'm going to take you back to Councillor Wilkinson to sum up. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.4. Members, items 12.5, 12.6, 12.7, 12.8, 12.9, 12.10, 12.11, 12.12, 12.13, 12.14, 12.15, 12.16, 12.17, 12.18, 12.19, 12.20, 12.21, 12.22, 12.23, 12.24, 12.25, 12.26, 12.27, 12.28, 12.29, 12.30, 12.31, 12.32, 12.33, 12.34, 12.35, 12.36, 12.37, 12.38, 12.39, 12.40, 12.41, 12.42, 12.43, 12.44, 12.45, 12.46, 12.47, 12.48, 12.49, 12.50, 12.51, 12.52, 12.53, 12.54, 12.55, 12.56, 12.57, 12.58, 12.59, 12.60, 12.61, 12.62, 12.63, 12.64, 12.65, 12.66, 12.67, 12.68, 12.69, 12.70, 12.71, 12.72, 12.73, 12.74, 12.75, 12.76, 12.77, 12.78, 12.79, 12.80, 12.81, 12.82, 12.83, 12.84, 12.85, 12.86, 12.87, 12.88, 12.89, 12.90, 12.91, 12.92, 12.93, 12.94, 12.95, 12.96, 12.97, 12.98, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 12.99, 
uh, and page 173 tells me it is 1044.7. I haven't met the 0.7 yet, Lord Mayor, indeed most of those number, but I recognise that this is a huge step forward for the city because it for the first time details this information. And I would ask the administration if next year, and I realise that uh, the motion that led to this was late in the financial year and left the administration little time, but it would be really good if next year we could see figures related to employment by gender, supervisory positions by gender, years of employment, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander employment, job churn by numbers and gender, and more. And again, I ask the administration to view the uh, City of Melbourne uh, annual report, which includes all of this detail uh, and indeed helps, I think, elected members to understand uh, the body uh, that they are actually uh, uh, at the helm of as the, uh, as the board, the elected body. So uh, thank you for the administration. I appreciate uh, the, the transparency. Councillor Martin. Councillor Aviard, you seconded the motion. Do you wish to speak to it? Members, do I? Reserve your right. Members, do I have any debate? Before I hand you back to Councillor Martin, I'd just like to say, members, uh, I would like to thank our CEO administration, having read every word of that text in that uh, annual report, which will soon be printed. I think it's an excellently and well-crafted annual report. Congratulations, CEO. Please extend our thanks to all of your report author authors who did that work. Councillor Martin, you're summing up? Governor. Members to the floor. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.6. Melbourne, uh, Melbourne, Melbourne, what am I saying Melbourne? Members, it's a long evening. Members, uh, item 12.10, uh, do I have a mover for item 12.10? That was the other item which was expressed to be discussed. I need a mover to move it through the system. This is the item which is the Gawler Place procurement process, members. I had Councillor Slama who hand up first and Councillor Wilkinson with hand up second. Councillor Slama, do you wish to speak to item 12.10? Uh, no, thank you. Reserve my right. Okay, Councillor Wilkinson, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to item 12.10? Okay, members, do I have any debate about item 12.10? Councillor Martin? Yeah, Lord Mayor, look, I asked this to be pulled specifically for the purpose of voting against it. Um, this, uh, the paperwork makes clear is a decision to authorise the CEO. And by the way, I think uh, the Lord Mayor and the administration for putting this in the public arena. Uh, I really appreciate that. There was no need for it to be secret, so it's grand that it is in the public arena. But having said that, um, I, I do not think that the elected body should be abrogating its responsibility for the expenditure of what is almost $8 million um, by delegating it to the CEO. Now, I understand that the timeline does not suit the administration nor the project completion dates, but I think that's uh, too little a reason for the elected body to say, you go for it, CEO, particularly when this body uh, is happy to engage in hours of debate about dockless bikes, uh, which cost the city nothing. And here is what is politically going to be potentially a real problem for us if it doesn't work. This is Rundle Mall. This is Rundle Mall that we're planning on fiddling with. It's all a place, but it, it intersects Rundle Mall. And I remind everybody that this will happen during the course of 2018. Um, now, I, I can't hear Councillor Abbey, it's kind of, but I'm sure it's, it's amusing. He was singing your praises, Councillor. Oh, Please continue. Oh, well, that's, that's all right. Look, I'm happy for him to verbalise it more, uh, more, more vocally if he wishes. Um, Lord Mayor, therefore, look, I would like to vote against this and I urge uh, members to do likewise. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Any further debate before I hand you back to the mover? Councillor Abia, do you wish to debate? Oh, no, that's my clarify point. Look, this is a very, very, very long and old master plan process. The council delivered on a $30 million project in Rundle Mall, actual, very successful, engaging stakeholders. And I have every faith that this will be delivered. We have good buy-in from the community and our stakeholders in Rundle Mall, uh, and I think it will be a very successful project. It was supported in its initial stages many years back, and it was a promise of a previous council to deliver on. Um, and we're delivering on it today. So I'm actually proud that we are doing that. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. <laughs> Councillor Slama, you're summing up. Yeah, Summed up, Councillor Slama. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? 
Those against? We carry. Thank you. Members, I now take you to item 13. Yes, we have a question on notice from Councillor Martin. Please, Councillor Martin, would you like to take your question as read? I would. I'm happy with that, Lord Mayor. Members, would you like me? It's a very brief answer, so I will read it, members. The answer to Councillor Martin's question is, the building order being undertaken by the City of Adelaide follows the building order process requested by the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. This process requires Council to identify buildings that include residential buildings more than two storeys in height, including apartments, hotels and motels, aged care facilities, hospitals, schools, assembly buildings, any buildings with occupants who are likely to be unfamiliar with means of escape or require assistance to escape. The 118 buildings excluded from the audit did not meet the above criteria. On completion of phase three of the building audit for the above listed buildings, the City of Adelaide will consult with DIPTI on how it wishes to manage the assessment of the audit for the other buildings identified. Members, I now take you on to questions without notice. Do I have any? I don't see any hands, so I will keep moving. We have motions. You do, Councillor Abia, question without notice. Just on the status of the um, uh, parking group that the councillor requested that we establish to look at infringement notices and expiations, what the status of that is? Thank you, Councillor. See you. Thanks, Claire, for the answer. Through the presiding member, we've been pulling together um, three or four pieces of work. One's in relation to uh, the Minister enabling local government to set the rate of its own ex expiation fees. The other is a suggestion from a workshop in July from council members to establish a panel to review the approach to waiving fees. The third piece is the um, guidelines that we use to assess how we waive and the feedback from July has been incorporated into a revised um, guideline for um, the next round of workshops, which are scheduled for uh, the 21st of November. So on the 21st of November, um, we'll bring to you um, that whole package so that um, council members can provide us some direction on which way they wish to take it. I'm extremely impressed. That felt like a question on notice, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Claire. It was a uh, very good response. Thank I you, Claire. It. Members, any further questions? It was a compliment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know this council doesn't give a lot of compliments. <laughs> I think Claire's in shock, CEO. I think you might need to get some medical assistance. <laughs> Councillor Martin will be out with the defibrillator very soon. Uh, members, any further questions without notice? I don't have any, so I'm going to take you on to motions on notice. Councillor Moran, motion on notice regarding Council Assessment Panel Planning Power, page 211 of your papers. Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. Thank you. On the basis that I move that on the basis of the City of Adelaide has formally established an independent Council Assessment Panel, CAP, to assess development applications, Council requests the Capital City Committee to consider having a conversation with Minister Rao to reinstate, asking him to reinstate planning assessment powers, including the following four options. One, full restoration of powers for all development in the City of Adelaide. Uh, two, increase the current uh, $10 million cap to $40 million. Um, three, change the trigger from dollar value to floor space, to, tw uh, to floor place of 25,000 square metres. Four, establish a joint City of Adelaide and State Planning Assessment Panel. We look for a seconder. Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Moran, floor is yours. Uh, yes, well, as a lot of us remember, nearly 10 years ago, the sort of Damocles fell upon the um, our planning assessment um, set up um, after a squabble or skirmish over tower rate. Uh, the council staff refused tower rate for many good reasons, but it was at a probably a political sensitive time and down came the sword. <laughs> Uh, the state then went on to um, op to clip our wings to developments under $10 million, which now, as the administration comment probably is quite $40 million. Um, just to, for the people that weren't here then, the uh, state DAC then went on to demand alterations to tower rate that were very much in line with what the council had asked, not going as far as what the council had asked. But um, for this... Um, um, 
development refusal, um, most of our, a lot of our powers were taken away. This has been a long time coming, I think most of us realise, as there is wrongly the City Council's development assessment was blamed for the city not going ahead. Clearly anybody who um, knew what they were talking about would have looked and seen that the Adelaide City Council had approved 99% uh, what what was holding the city back is the developers themselves were not building the buildings that we had approved. Uh, we did refuse some during that time um, that deserved refusal, um, such as a large student accommodation, uh, overseas accommodation block that had the toilet six inches from the head of the bed. Um, that was one of the rare ones that we did we did refuse. Um, so we were a, a panel, a very good panel. Um, most of us have served on it over the time. Um, we we did all our um, business in public. Uh, but anyway, that's that's gone. Um, we then reduced our numbers to nine. I had to reduce our numbers to nine, where we had five independent, so-called independent members that we appointed, and very good panel members they were, and the rest were made up of councillors voted from council. Uh, now the new um, systems in with CAP, the new acronym, uh, it is as the state wanted, only one councillor and uh, four independent people. Now we are now operating under the new guidelines, the new planning assessment rules of the state government. And it's time we revisited as to why we can't, um, our panel, which is their panel, um, can't uh, look at either things, uh, all the, uh, the um, developments in the city of Adelaide, and we put, put our council and our council's panel back in on the front foot. Um, with the help of the administration, um, we have suggested other ways that we could have slightly more skin in the game. Um, as I said, we were a trust, we were never as gu guilty of holding development back as well in the first place, but nevertheless, now that is all gone, that's history. Uh, the first suggestion is a full, full, rest of, uh, one more minute, full restoration of power. We'll get to, uh, your seconder has comfort. The chamber is nodding at me. Please continue, Councillor. Um, the first is full restoration of power. Second is obviously the 10 million going to 40, which would be in line with what the money would be worth now. Uh, at the administration feel that a floor area would be a better way to judge the size. Uh, to judge the importance of development. We see developers pushing up their price and pushing under their price. Interestingly, under the new cap, the developers have been bringing it under the 10 million so that we assess it because the new system, the government system is not as popular as it was. But anyway, look, a lot of people said, look, you'll ne we'll never get it, they'll never give anything back. Well, we have to start the conversation. We have to start somewhere. There is no rationale or logic now why the state would deny it. It is their panel, it is their system, and uh, it is. It, it, we, we've fallen in line with everything that they've asked for because we've had to. But um, I think we have to, to. We don't want to die asking. That perhaps this one will be rejected. But it's it's logical and it's fair and it's sensible. They'd have to have good reasons to say no to all of those. So I ask you to support. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Obi, are you seconded? <coughs> Reserving your right, members. Do I have any debate on this item? Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, no, naturally, I support Councillor Moran's motion, and um, uh, I think it's timely given the given the change in the legislation. Um, when developers buy a site, they do their research, they establish what they can and can't do, and they pay according for the, the for the land based on what the development plan of the day allows them to do. Um, with the Tower 8 situation, the development plan was expressly clear in stipulating that development on that site was to have a podium the same size as the GPO and the tower to be set back 12 metres. That's why that was refused, because it didn't comply with the development plan. They knew it, but doesn't, it doesn't, there's no harm in asking um, for, for more, but that doesn't mean that uh, that approving was the right thing to do because they knew what the development plan said at the time when they applied for that building. But I think it's timely now uh, with a new act to, uh, to review that. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have any further debate, members? Councillor Abad, you reserved your right. Do you wish to speak? Councillor Moran, back to you to sum up. Uh, yes, look, I'm just answering Sue's question. Uh, this, this, uh, the, nation, the genesis of this was with um, the chair of the new CAP, John Hodgson, asking that we, um, we were very anxious about that, whether he was entering the political fray, but um, that reassured, CAP reassured him that that was his you know, right to do that. 
um, to ask for our ploughs back. So um, the genesis is of the, I'm not the chair, I'm only the deputy chair, so our chairman has asked the council ask this. And I think, just uh, one thing I didn't touch on, I think the capital city is the best, committee is the best way to do this. It's a non-aggressive um, forum, face-to-face, uh, -face, where, whereas I think letters to the minister or so forth are seen as rather aggressive. Where I'm, I'm trusting this to the Capital City Committee to have a fair chat about what can be done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 15.1. Members, we stay with motions on notice. Item 15.2, Councillor Arby, our motion on notice regarding Rundle Street inter interim support package. Councillor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, just uh, very briefly, I think the motion sort of speaks to itself. I mean, the really intention there, as we've heard before, um, from the Minister, from the State Government. I look to a second for you, so oh, I can enable your oh, debate. Councillor Wilkinson had had up first. Thank you, I will go to, back to you, Councillor Abiyad. Um, look, Lord Mayor, I don't think in any way, shape or form, Council or the State Government to some degree uh, could have managed the exit of about 10,000 people a week from that site and try to leverage the economic and social impact and try to fill that gap. I think that is a, a challenge on its own. I would argue that the state government had a lot of time to do it, 10 years almost, to be able to manage the process and put things in place. And, and I know in the previous council, despite us asking at many occasions, <coughs> to get their economic and social impact reports, we've ended up having to conduct one of our own in this term of council. Uh, and the results were quite clear, $15 million a year back to retail, exit of about 10,000 people a week from the area, et cetera, et cetera. No one's disputing that the medium to long term uh, for the East End of Rundle Street specifically will provide some serious good outcomes. I think the future of the precinct has definitely been underwritten with an extension of the tram, with the O-Bahn, with potential opportunities of development around the o site. But in the short term, there's a real pain on the street that needs to be noted. I um, uh, spoke to every single trader on the street uh, the third day after the hospital closed and I visited again a couple of weeks later. They're all recording a 30 to about 40% drop in their visitation. Some of them are considering opening a little bit later. Uh, they're missing out on trade. Uh, they've all been heavily impacted. Even the good ones have been heavily impacted. Uh, and these are the ones that are capable through social media to attract more to the area. I would argue that council could have done more. Um, I've got to say um, I'm a little bit disappointed on what we could have done as a council. Um, we've had an economic impact report for quite some time. Um, and I feel like we've come a little bit after the event to try to assist, even with this motion. Uh, but nevertheless, I think everything that we can do will go a long way in trying to um, support the traders in the short term uh, in the area in hope um, that they can make um, ends meet until um, there's good traction in the area. So look, I think given the meeting we had in the East End last week, and I'd also like to acknowledge the work of administration um, and specifically uh, Matt Grant uh, for being involved in that workshop uh, and for the work that they've done. So thank you, CEO. Um, and, um, but look, I think this is something that potentially we could put together rather quickly. And I would hope that the CEO, uh, the question we asked the workshop of the minister earlier, that we can potentially try to prepackage some of the stuff that the state government's doing uh, in our proposal uh, or in our report that we can give back to traders in the area so they can get maximum bang for buck from some of the things we've achieved. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. I've got Councillor Wilkinson, who is your seconder, followed by Councillor Slama, who had his hand up. So, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, the uh, Rundle Street East has always been one of the jewels in Adelaide, and I think it's commonly regarded by visitors to Adelaide that it's, uh, um, compared to some other streets uh, in Adelaide, is it's unspoiled historic character and scale, the, the sunny, uh, south side of the footpath and stuff like that, which actually makes it uh, so popular, and the rents are noticeably higher because of because of the uh, the, the appeal of the area. But despite all of that, that it's got going for it, no no commercial street can take a hit like losing a massive um, uh, supply of customers by way of a hospital being on their doorstep. Now there are developments like the Adelaidean 
um, apartments and hotel, the monument hotel uh, moat, uh, apartments near the corner of East Terrace, mid block, this one behind East Terrace and, and Rundle Street, which when they are built and occupied, that will provide more people in the area to, to uh, patronise those businesses. Um, but um, until those have come online, there's going to be a period of transition, which is why I'm supportive of Councillor Abbey's uh, motion as a, as a somewhat of a stopgap motion, but, but just do some things in the interim to um, uh, help those traders um, and, and to deal with that um, uh, deficit in trade, which they've uh, suffered through a decision that is no fault of their own. They didn't push for the hospital to be moved down to the other end of the city. So uh, I thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Slummer? Um, not a great deal more, except to just to reiterate, there is a lot of hurt I'm hearing this morning of, of traders who have been there for a long time, struggling at the moment with the council rates that have come through. Um, businesses that you and all, all, I, all of us know have, um, are reporting up to 20, 30% loss, and there's no light at the end of the tunnel. So for us to jump on the front foot, you know, it's very much the reason we I moved the bike race back in the day, um, and I know we're working on that. Um, administration certainly working on that. But uh, the reinstating of the good one here is uh, the reinstating of the possible outdoor dining concession for the East End um, is, is, is certainly going to make all these little little bits and pieces make a big difference in the long run. Um, the parking um, is is critical. Um, we've been blocked by the Oban, North Terrace, and now everyone else exiting. There's really no reason to drive in there at the moment. Um, so to, to in incentivise on any shape, way possible is is commendable. Thank you, Councillor Slammer. I've got Councillor Hender followed by Councillor Martin. Councillor Hender. Um, just very briefly, I support this, but I do just want to make a couple of uh, couple of points. Um, firstly, cities are organic beasts, and you know there's there's a, there's a limit to what we can do to um, to address that. Things change in cities. That's that's the nature of the beast, and just as when a new enterprise moves into a district uh, and therefore that district really thrives. We don't say, well, we'd like a bit of cut of the action here, guys, because you seem to be doing better than anybody else in the place. We can't also be expected to completely fix the woes of a, of a, a section of the city um, where they have problems because a business or an enterprise has moved out. But that's not to say we shouldn't try to help. Um, I also attended a meeting last Monday and I thought what we were already doing on the ground is very significant and it's, it's really good to see both the state and the city there saying, here's all the things that we can do to help. And there was um, uh, certainly a very good, I thought, a very good response to that amongst the traders down there who could really see that um, both parties, both levels of government were putting their shoulder to the wheel. I did also want to make two other points. One is that the hurt that's being held, being felt down there, some of which I think might be being assigned to the hospital, is also being held, being felt across the city. Uh, there is a general downturn in retail. Um, so it may well be that some of the downturn there that's been assigned to the hospital is actually just the, the same downturn that anybody else is feeling across the city. And I'm sure those of us who live in other pet sectors of the city would, uh, knowing talking to our retailers, the, the close, retailers closest to us are, are hearing many of the same concerns, perhaps not to the same extent. Um, and I, one last point, I would just like administration to take, if the work they do here, I think is, is useful work and I would really like us to um, to hold this information to the extent that we can, because I think there might be opportunities for us to, to use what we learn in the East End for other parts of the city. And in particular, I'm thinking about the central market area, if and when we do any redevelopment there. We've come quite late to the party here. We've been quite reactive, I think, as, as Councillor Abian has pointed out, and it would have been great to be on the front foot, although there's a limit to what you can do before the actual hospital closes. But um, it would be great for us to think about using this opportunity at the East End to gather all the learnings we get from down there so that we can apply them earlier if and when we have we have to develop the um, Adelaide, uh, sorry, the um, Central Market Arcade and impact on the traders there and the district there in, this, in a similar way, I think. Perhaps not to the same extent, but in a similar way. So it gives us an opportunity to pilot some things and see whether they work and then hold that information so that we might apply them in other parts of the city if and when the time comes. <coughs> thank you, and wisely said, Councillor Hender. Um, Councillor Martin? Yes, thank you, uh, 
Lord Mayor. Um, uh, look, I'll support the motion. Um, I, I echo uh, some of the sentiments of Councillor Hender. That is to say, it's unfortunate that for 10 years now, there has been talk of uh, the Ra moving, and this strategy is coming after the event, not before the event, and that would have been a much better way of handling it. Um, uh, but anyway, look, let's not uh, dwell on the past. What I would ask the administration to do, however, to provide a much more accurate picture of what's going on, is to provide a report that costs not only any initiatives it might propose, but is able to calculate what is the value of the state government investment in the area, which has been de detailed to us uh, in recent times. And that's included uh, scheduling events in the area, uh, looking at uh, changing the nature of the area through, as it discussed at the public meeting, uh, new walkways, perhaps from North Terrace through to uh, Rundle Street, and, and include uh, projects that have already been initiated, including the catenary lighting, which is due for completion shortly, and uh, the Adelaide City's uh, promised splash expenditure, uh, which is uh, supposed to be greater than usual. Now, all of those things will help to give us a bigger picture and will provide uh, some further illumination of what is, I understand, a, a pretty tough time for traders there. Thank you, Councillor Martin. No further hands. I'm going to send you Councillor Clarahan. Look, um, I also want to um, support this motion, but I think we need a little bit of context. And I think that, you know, we need to have a look at what's happening with other traders in other main streets around the city, because um, I find that they're being missed or just because they're not so vocal are perhaps not receiving the same amount of support. Um, and I do acknowledge, uh, I think Councillor Slammer said it perfectly, we've got North Terrace and we've got the O-Barn. So it's like a triple whammy. And I think that in this instance, yes, we do need to offer up support, but let's not forget, um, let's not overestimate the other impacts in terms of retail potentially being down in other areas across the city. Thank you, members. I now take you back to the movement. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, just briefly, retail is doing it very tough in the city, hence to why a um, few of the councillors have brought back motions to try to waive outdoor dining, to try to assist, you know, some of the things we want to do in council, some of that stuff has been knocked back. I mean, in reality, all you need to do is look at our Invest Adelaide website, our statistics. Um, largest occupancies in the city around retail is hospitality, and we've seen a huge increase in the hospitality sector without a direct increase in our population. I mean, as an operator of a business in the East End for about nine years, um, it was just us and a few cafes. Within two years, we had seven other tenancies open right around us without a population increase at all, at all. So, and that's fine, I get that. Free enterprise is important, but as long as it's educated free enterprise. And I think some of the stuff we're doing now with Invest Adelaide will really help and will go a long way in educating investors to know where they're going, the size of the population, the size of the investment that's in there, how many other coffee shops are around them, et cetera, et cetera. But look, we're here. Um, and this is the position we're in. And like you said, you have a hospital, you have a, a tram extension, no barn extension, et cetera, et cetera. So look, uh, I think taking this account is good. And I like what Councillor Hender said uh, as a sort of a deployment rescue package. When these things occur around the city outside our control, at least we know what mechanisms we've got in place to provide some relief uh, to be assist. But also I think it's important for us to approach landlords in the area and also see what they can do on their part. Um, to see um, how they can also um, shift some of the relief or you know, try to assist some of their traders that have been loyal to them and been in the area for quite some time as well. So look, it's, uh, I think we all need to be involved, um, landlords, council, state governments and traders, and, and hope we can sort of you know, learn a lesson from this. But I know it's organic, but I'd like to think in most cities, it doesn't take 10 years to plan an exit of a site without having another plan for it uh, and going back to the drawing board again. And this, unfortunate, um, and I think we did end up with a better outcome with the state government, but that came at a cost. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 15.2, which takes us on to item 15.3. Councillor Wilkinson, motion and notice regarding Lounders Boathouse, page 215. Councillor? Uh, so I move the motion in my name. Is second? Seconded by Councillor Moran. 
Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, the uh, Lauders boat shed, as we know, was going to be demolished and, and we as the council saved it and it's become a huge success, a really positive um, uh, thing on the Torrens um, and uh, the uh, uh, the operators of Lowndes Boat Shed talk about how tourists and things come and taking photographs of it all the time. It's actually uh, uh, it's been nominated for a Civic Trust Award. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, it's been very successful, really popular. It's just the sort of thing we want happening in the city. Um, when, uh, when we were looking at the original uh, uh, Lowndes Boat Shed, um, we had the benefit of early photographs that actually showed a, uh, um, it actually there was another structure to another boat shed type structure to the immediately to the east of it with a gable roof. And I flagged the idea that it might be an option to sort of reinstate that to provide more dining because they're needing more dining space. And I know Councillor Henry, they might have been able to reconfigure the, the bar and kitchen facilities within it. Uh, maybe a bit more efficiency, but nonetheless, it's it's popular. People love it. It's just the sort of thing we want to have happening on the Torrens. And then the uh, the operator of um, Popeye, which is a again a very popular thing that has been connecting with other activities, Piggy Flat and, and the convention centre and stuff like that. Um, this is uh, now that we've actually made something of the uh, Lowndes boat shed, which is where. The, where the Popeye derives from, um, to have a to reinstate the pontoon that was there, um, uh, which you can see in the early photographs of here, and I think uh, is something that's been sought and makes a lot of sense. And there's other issues such as um, uh, there's uh, people getting down uh, the bank to to the uh, where the people embark onto Popeye. With a steep lawn and there's erosion due to the, uh, the the sealed road that's there now. So there's option op opportunities to do other associated landscape works to really just sort of build on the success of of of, um, of the uh, Lounders boat shed and, and Popeye. And uh, there are archival photographs actually on display on Lounders boat shed showing, uh, you know, which is where I, I got the idea. Which showed the pontoon and, and it was, had a historical lamp by the by the by the water where people alight and, uh, and and the structure to the uh, to the east. So uh, I just think it'd be a terrific thing just to build on the uh, um, success and popularity of of, of it. And um, uh, and I think it's you know there's always sound justification when you've got you know archival photographs that show. Show these things. It's just reinstating a good thing that was there before. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. You were seconded by Councillor Moran. Councillor Antic had hand up and may want to speak after Councillor Moran. Can I just support the concept for a bit? Okay, I'll go to Councillor Moran as a seconder and then uh, we'll keep moving from there on. Yes, I always support Sandy. This is his area of expertise and um, uh, it sounds it sounds a, a wonderful um, addition. Um, it took Councillor Wilkinson how many years to save Lounders Boat Shed and that, what a wonderful save that was and up for a civic award. Um, so yes, I encourage you to um, support this. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Anton, did you want to make any comments? Uh, Councillor Anton. Um, look, Lord Mayor, I can't support this. Um, I do, I do love the idea that we do something down in that part of the river, and I would be really pleased um, if we we put in a budget bid for the new financial year to set aside some money for for that area. Um, I guess subject to some of our other um, commitments. But as I've indicated to Councillor Wilkinson, the the um, the motion as it's currently put is just too specific for me, and let me explain. Um, it calls for the reinstatement of the former pier. Um, I, I don't know if that's a good idea. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but there's nothing to indicate to me that how it's going to be used, what it's for, what the likely cost of that is. Um, it just, you know, that sort of specificity without some explanation for it, I can't, I just don't have enough information to support it. It calls for heritage lighting, um, original heritage lighting. That also might be a good idea, but I, I think probably what we need along the river is consistent lighting so that the, the whole river park 
linear park has you know the same lighting all the way along rather than whatever lighting is there and then heritage lighting and then something else lighting. Um, it, it feels to me a, a better design outcome to have a consistent set of lighting across there. So I, I'd need to be really convinced that heritage lighting was a good idea. And it calls for the reinstatement of, um, of the structure next to Lander's boat shed. Bearing in mind we've spent a lot, a huge amount of money on this property already. A very simple shed down by the river. I think there are probably a lot of other things that we would spend money on down there in, in advance of, of putting another structure alongside. And again, I've got no idea whether the structure is going to cost us $2.50 or $250,000 or, or $2 million. Um, but I, I think there's definitely some scope down there and I've been down there with um, staff members to have a look at changing the way the road comes down from the... Um, uh, from I guess uh, from the Victoria yeah Victoria Drive from from that area of opening it up in a way so that it actually it, it becomes an extension of the Anzac Walk you know the view that you get down Anzac Walk so that we actually do start drawing people down to the river as they go down Anzac Walk I think there's some real opportunity to use the Lander's boat shed as a destination and to do all sorts of things to pull people down there I'm just not convinced that the three things that have been identified by Councillor Wilkinson are necessarily the things to do. To do. So I support the idea. Um, I definitely support a budget bid for, for next financial year, but a motion as specific as this, um, I can't lend my support to. Thank you, Councillor. Hand to Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, I, I appreciate uh, the arguments that uh, Councillor Hinder is uh, putting, but nevertheless, uh, it is, as the administration uh, suggests in its comment, a feasibility study. That is, it is a proposal to investigate whether or not uh, it is feasible to do it. And uh, frankly, um, I'd certainly like to see the riverbank improved in some way, but this is actually just uh, a single initiative uh, that is aimed at providing uh, uh, some enhancement to an historical site, to an area, by the way, which has changed dramatically over the years. Uh, and indeed, uh, just by way of anecdote, my mother doesn't even go down to the riverbank anymore because she hates the way it's been changed over the years. This is an opportunity to reinstate that calm, serene riverbank, which we see in the photos, well, uh, look, I think it's important to retain. And that area is really quite attractive. Uh, I see as an additional bonus any uh, work on uh, the area around uh, the Lander's Boathouse as encouraging more traffic to the area. Uh, now, it may be that some alterations to the roadway that was uh, mentioned by Councillor Hinder would be a good idea too. But this is the initiative on the table. It is for a feasibility study not for the expenditure of any money beyond that, that will come back to Council for final consideration sometime in 2018. So on that basis, uh, I will be supporting it and I hope other members will too. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I wonder whether Councillor Wilkinson would consider a slight adjustment to his wording, uh, understanding the intent, but so rather than being specific instead of in saying um, to reinstate the former pier and in 1.2 to reinstate the gable structure, uh, that it reads to uh, that the concept design and cost estimate to consider the reinstatement of and in 1.2 to consider the reinstatement of, which basically means that it's in considered in part of the design process and the estimates as opposed to being prescriptive as that's what we're going to do. Councillor, I look to you, I would, a variation has been suggested. I would very much in support suggested. of something that is a consideration of that without being that specific because it just might not work. Um, it's just a yes or no, Councillor. I'm comfortable just to include the word consider. You are? Uh, I, I mean, I'm quite comfortable that it's going to be a very straightforward structure to do. To, to Councillor, you get an opportunity to sum up. At this point in time, I just need you to say yes or no. So you're saying yes. I look to your seconder. Your seconder is saying yes. Do I take general comfort from the room? It looks like we do. So thank you. Thank you, DLM. So, members, I move the debate on and we go back to no further hands. I'm going to take you back to your mover. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the motion refers to uh, other associated landscape work, which provides for some of the other matters which Councillor Hender had referred to uh, 
So that was the intent, and I, and I thank um, administration for the assistance with, the, uh, with, the, with this motion. Um, but uh, uh, my, the way I look at it is, when you've got some evidence of something good that was there, you know, then that's uh, you know why not follow that? You know, we've got, as opposed to just doing some arbitrary new you know, something there. Um, it's it's reinforcing that sort of boat shed aesthetic going along there, uh, and I don't think it would be a particularly expensive structure, but I know that it would be very useful for the for the. Uh, the Lounders Cafe and everybody that enjoys it, and I know that the uh, Popeye uh, operators are wanting to have a pontoon because that's their base, that's where they set off from, and they're, and they're doing great things for activation of the river on the water. And, and, it's, it's all, and the light was there, and it's a nice idea to, uh, to, to sort of replicate you know, what, what was there. So that's the intention. Thank you, Councillor Members. I put item 15.3 before you for the vote. Those in favour? Those against, we carry item 15.3. Members, item 15.4 has been dealt with, which takes us immediately to item 15.5. Councillor Hender, motion on notice, City Link tram extension, page 222 <coughs> papers. Councillor, it looks like you have a second of Councillor Wilkinson without hesitation. Floor is yours, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Um, uh, look, members, I have circulated um, an email about this. Um, this is really just to make an investigation. Um, it, um, it relates to an issue that's been drawn to my attention by administration and also by um, some people from the East End who've now seen uh, sort of what appears to be final drawings of the tram design arrangements. And, um, and, and there are some concerns about the extent to which the tram is going to uh, extend itself down to the, to the East End. So this is, um, this is not to do anything other than to ask the, um, the Lord Mayor to contact the State Government and, and just get a better grip on what actually is proposed. So um, unless anybody's got anything strong views to the contrary, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Councillor Wilkinson, you seconded? Uh, yeah, it's really further to uh, the intent of uh, Councillor Appiard's motion to sort of help, help the East End. What's the point of the track down there if, uh, if you can't actually, the change can't actually turn right from Street, head down to the east end, that seems a bit pointless and, and silly penny pension. You know, we're going to spend all that taxpayers' money extending the tram down. It's just such a logical thing just to spend the extra two minutes. You know, it's a relatively small amount of that government terms to make sure that the, the tram network services and functions the, the, uh, the, the east end and, and future extensions to the east end. Members, do I have any debate on this item? Councillor Antic. I support this. I find it extraordinary that this trend could possibly not turn right or turn. Uh, but I guess the ALP um, in this state uh, called the tram moving only to the left, so that's perhaps what we're talking about. Uh, so it's not unsurprising, Lord Mayor, but staggering that we couldn't find the money uh, in state government coffers for this short-sighted view, so I, I applaud the motion. Councillor, members, any further debates? I'm going to take you back to your mover, Councillor Hender. Summing up, members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 15.5. Members, I now take you as a final agenda item, because we've dealt with all of the motions to exclude and ex uh, confidential items. Uh, we have two items, I understand, members, which are motions without notice. The first is a motion without notice from Councillor Martin regarding Adelaide Stadium Management Authority Liquor Licensing Changes application. Councillor, do your fellow members have this? Do you wish to read it? Uh, yes, it would be a good idea, Lord Mayor. Um, for those who haven't read it and for those in the gallery who may Please not do. Have Please proceed. Um, it is that Council 1 requests that administration continues to prepare reports for consideration at both an Adelaide Parklands Authority meeting and the Council meeting on the 14th of November regarding the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority application for an extension to their permanent liquor licensed area, which will inform Council's position as the landlord prior to the licensing hearing scheduled for the 27th of November. Two, request that administration does not implement the formal public consultation about the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority application for an extension to their permanent liquor licensed area due to commence on the 25th of October 2017 by your say, as outlined in the internal e-news communication to elected members last Friday, 20th of October. Members, I seek a seconder. 
Councillor Clarehan, Councillor Martin, floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I want to uh, preface what follows by saying that I have spoken with the administration on about three occasions in the last 24 hours about this matter, and I have responded to their feedback and changes in the scenario, and that's reflected in the motion before you. Uh, the timeline to this began on Friday when the administration flagged in the newsletter to us that it was going to do a public consultation through your say and direct contact with some residents of North Adelaide to gauge public reaction to the changes. Now, uh, this I understand from the administration stemmed from their belief that those who attended the committee last week wanted a public consultation. Now, I don't believe that was what was on the minds of those who attended the committee and the administration tells me the only way to change that direction is to get a contrary direction from the floor of council, which is what I'm asking for tonight. Now, uh, I am generally all in favour of consultation, but on this occasion, not. A and my reasons are simply that a full briefing on what is proposed will be coming to APLA and then to this council on the 27th for decision. And, uh, now, that's the next logical step. We will then know all, hopefully, that there is to know. Things like the proposed boundaries extending outside the existing core area. Uh, but critically, we want to know what the Adelaide Oval Stadium Management Authority wants in terms of entertainment allowances for the sites. And I'm not clear about that. I'm not sure anyone is. So without that, I argue it's nigh on impossible to ask members of the community what they think about the SMA proposal when we don't even understand ourselves entirely. And secondly, uh, we are the landlord and our position has, as uh, Councillor Moran articulated at the committee last week, been crystal clear. That is, that the Adelaide Oval is to hold events, sporting and otherwise, inside the walls of the stadium. And that was uh, a decision of council dating back some years. And I, I might add, I understand with some effort now, the final reason is that the consultation process is actually the one that's going to happen in the Liquor and Gaming Commission. That is where the SMA will outline its case and hear something in the order of, I understand, about 60 submissions so far. Uh, so that seems to me to be the forum. That's where the feedback occurs. Uh, our position, I contend, is that we oppose the application, which has been our position, until November the 14th when Council will have all of the information, hopefully, in front of it, and will make a decision in directing the administration in how to proceed. Now, I, I think that's a very clear, logical process, and, and I would ask members to support that. Um, it, it seems to me the only sensible course. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Clarehan, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to this matter? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think the previous motion that Councillor Martin refers to was the one that I put, where we actually consult with relevant stakeholders and residents in the precinct. But what's happened is um, we've now got an issue around how we use your say. And when I read this through, um, when I read about this on Friday, I went, ah. Uh, this is opening it to all and sundry, and so we're going to get every member of the South Australian Cricket Club or whatever responding to this application, which means that there's potential there for it to go like another matter that was withdrawn on from the agenda tonight. Um, I've had requests from lots of people in the community saying, what is this all about? What is going on? Um, can Council please provide some information to make it clear to us? I've even got a response from some residents who've been liaising with the Stadium Management Authority themselves and have at least come out a bit clearer, uh, a lot clearer than we've been uh, able to ascertain. So I'm happy uh, with this. I certainly don't want a consultation on your say. We are the landlord. Let's exercise that right. Uh, I feel very uncomfortable about this being out to all and sundry because I think we've learned um, tonight, or today what exactly can happen to that sort of consultation and we need to revisit your say and make sure that it still retains an element of integrity. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Members, do I have any further debates? Councillor Wilkinson. 
Yeah, I think the important thing about consultation is how much stake different stakeholders have. Someone that attends a game once in a while, as opposed to someone who lives on Pennington Terrace, to have the same stake in what's proposed. Thank you, Councillor. Members, I don't see any further hands, so I'm going to take you back to your Councillor Abiyad. One thing that came out, just sorry, Councillor Moran, I'll be very brief. Um, look, I don't, I don't have a problem. I agree with Councillor Wilkinson around, around stakeholder engagements, etc. And I think, from what I understand through our consultation process, we do know who are ratepayers versus who aren't ratepayers. But I don't want to go down a path where we silence South Australians on the say they want to have in their city. I think it's really important that we take into account that we have a role to play at a local government base, but also at a capital city base. Uh, attendees of those events should also have a say on how things could work. They're also concerned with their safety, et cetera. And I can understand that there'll be more of an impact on residents and businesses than there is on people that visit once a week or once a month. I get that. Uh, but I think our systems at the moment do record uh, proximity in living, they do record the suburb, they do record other aspects. So I just want to be mindful that we don't just go and ask the same people all the time, and it's the same answer we get every time. If we're here to represent the interest of all South Australians in their city, we need to, I agree, take into account how we do that, but we need to make sure that there's a mechanism where everyone's heard. Um, if that doesn't do that, I have concerns with how this process is going to be done. Um, and I've raised concerns because that takes us into a place where we're not we're just simply a regional local government and we're not a capital city. Uh, we need to be able to consult with everyone and ask everyone uh, how we consider that feedback is up to council. So if council wants to hold uh, more uh, of a focus or mark a higher level on our ratepayers and what they would like to see, I, I'm happy to debate that, but I think we need to hear from everyone. I don't think we can exclude in our consultation city visitors and non-city residents um, that use our city and frequent our city. So I just caution councillors on taking that part as a capital city. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Members, I don't see any further hands. I'm going to put you back to your mover, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm not challenging uh, the concept of consultation and uh, the city's role as a capital city and the right of individuals to know what's going on. What I am saying is that we do not have enough information to ensure that people are properly briefed in order to have an opinion. That, I contend, will come when the administration has been able to gather more information. And I imagine there will be further information still when the Liquor and Gambling Commissioner questions the SMA. That then will lead to a consultative process conducted by the Commissioner with all of the parties involved. And I'm suggesting through this motion, let's, let's not go down that path. Let's not muddy the waters or confuse people. Let's just maintain our position until a briefing paper comes to us on the 14th of November and Council then decides how it proceeds. Uh, but it will effectively end the attempt to elicit opinions about something about which we're not entirely certain at this time. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members accordingly, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? Members, we carry the motion without notice. Members, uh, further motions without notice. Councillor Moran, are you wishing to proceed? Um, I think I might put lodge my motion without notice on notice. Thank you, Councillor Moran. <laughs> members, do I have any further motions without notice? I don't. No further motions without notice. So, members, thank you very much. I'd like to thank each of you for a very informed debate. Members, I formally close this meeting at 9.17 p.m. on Tuesday, the 24th of October. I thank our CEO and our administration. Thank you and good evening.